salon hostess Rachel is seated in a boudoir, studying her countenance in a small hand mirror. What she sees triggers reflections and emotions. These, in turn, lead her to continue scrutinizing herself in the mirror from various points of view. At some point, her increasing emotional temperature leads her to rise from her chair. Throughout, she shares her inner life directly with the audience, as though with an intimate and sympathetic confidant. I wish for nothing more ardently now than to change myself, outwardly and inwardly. I am sick of myself, for I can do nothing about it and will remain who I am, just as my face will. We can both grow older, but nothing more. I have a strange fantasy. It is as if some super mundane being, just as I was thrust into this world, plunged these words with a dagger into my heart. Yes, have sensibility. See the world as you see it. Be great and noble. Nor can I take from you the faculty of eternally thinking. But I add one thing more. Be a Jewess. I can, if you will, derive every evil, every misfortune from that faithful moment. I don't know. It is as though many years ago something was shattered inside me, and I take a cruel pleasure in knowing that henceforth it can no longer be broken, pulled at, and beaten, although now it has become a place to which I myself can no longer reach. And if there is such a place within one, all possibility of happiness is ruled out. And now my life is a slow bleeding to death. By keeping still, I can delay it. Every moment, every attempt to staunch it is a new death. And immobility is possible for me only in death itself. I shall never be convinced that I am a Shlemiel and a Jewish in all these years. And after so much thinking about it, it still has not dawned upon me. I shall never really grasp it. That is why the clang of the murderous axe does not nibble at my root. That is why I am still living. Good yontiv, good yontiv, a good yontiv to everybody. Ready, ready, I must speak to you. No? Yeah, I had a terrible dream. Whoa, what did you dream, my boy? I said, I dreamed I was trying to get to the Holy Land in a ship. And a great storm came. The boat sank, and I fell straight into the water. I was drowning, then I woke up ready. It was horrible. I was scared out of my mind. What's it mean, this dream? Can you tell me? Don't worry, my dear friend. God will provide. Dreams you don't have to worry about. But tell me something. How old are you, my dear boy? Fifty-nine last month. That's what I thought. And tell me, Red Rosa, have you made for yourself a hill to provide for your son and your daughters? For River and Sora, little Hannah? Give out, Rebbe, you don't think that? Don't worry, I told you not to worry about dreams. Moishe, look, you've known me for how many years already? A long time, no? You know I always remind people of their real purpose in this world. And I tell them they should make proper preparations for leaving this world. Confidentially, with the Hasidim on each side listening carefully. Tell me, Roy Moiser, how much is your estate worth today? The house, the brewery, the sawmill, the land, the ganze esek. I don't know, maybe 30,000 ruch, maybe 40,000 ruch. Hasidim and Rebbe are quite impressed. Reboiser, this is a tremendous sum. Your family can live nicely on this money for many years, if you make proper arrangements. So tell me, Rebbe, what kind of arrangements do you suggest? So everything will be l'shem shemaim. Why, sure, I'm very happy you asked this question. It's good to see that you are thinking of the world to come. If you ask me, I suggest you divide your property into three equal shares. One share for your wife, and your son Yankala, one share for the three girls, and the third share you should leave to us so that we can carry on the Lord's work. Signs of great approval by all Hasidim except Menachem. In this way you will bring great honor to your name and you will contribute to the glory of the master of the world. Joyfully slapping Reb Oizer on the back. For is it not written in our holy Torah? Tehillah, the David, a psalm of David. I will exalt you, my lord, the king, and I will bless your name forever and ever. From this we learn 
that not just today will we praise the Lord, but also in the future we will ensure that the Lord can be served even after we leave this world. Reb Oyser indicates unqualified agreement. The Rebbe goes on, And to commemorate your pledge, Reb Oyser, tomorrow I want you should bring us 50 bottles of your best schnapps from your brewery. We'll celebrate this great mitzvah you are doing for the Almighty. The Hasidim shake the hands of Reb Oyser and drink a toast to the Rebbe. Then they resume the song and dance with a clear allusion to the Rebbe as the real master of the world. Buzzer and slide, Reb Menachem's interpretation. Menachem. Rebbe, I would like to add a comment to your interpretation of the verse from the Psalm of David. Rebbe, to Shabtai. And who is this young man? I have not seen him here before. Shabtai. His name is Menachem. They say he comes from Sasla, where he was put under the ban for his theoretical views. Watch out for this one, Rebbe. He's a troublemaker. They say he's a lunatic. Yehuda heard him say he's been in the palace of the Messiah. Rebbe to Menachem. Well, Shabtai tells me your name is Rebbe Menachem from the town of Sasla. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to Schultz Rina, and I certainly would like to hear your opinion. One must welcome every chance to discuss our holy Torah with fellow Jews. Menachem, thank you, Rebbe. For years I have heard of the great and holy Rebbe Mordechai Daniel of Schultz Rina. Now that I am living in Schultz Rina and we are neighbors, I hope we may be able to share our views on Torah often in the future. For me, this would be a great honor. I thank you, Rebbe Menachem. And now, what is it that you wanted to say about the Psalm of David, which I mentioned? All right, the psalm begins, the Hila, the Dabi, a psalm of David. No, I wish to add, Rebbe, that this word, the also has the connotation of mixture and confusion, as is written in Job 4.18. And in his angels he places to hola, that is, in his angels he places confusion. The word the prayer, and the word to hola, confusion, share the same consonants. And so the oral tradition of the Torah allows us to infer some possible deeper connection between the two words. Rebbe, young man, are you questioning the literal written meaning of the Torah text which our father Moses of blessed memory received on Mount Sinai? Menachem, heaven forbid, Rebbe, I merely wish to suggest an additional point of view concerning these holy words. Each new point of view allows us to receive additional light from our sacred Torah especially in these difficult times of ours in which there was so much pressure both from within and from without of the Jewish world to abandon the Torah and turn to heretical views. We are in need of more and more guidance from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. From now till the end of the scene, Reb Menachem gradually works himself up to a frenzy of prophetic zeal until he has managed thoroughly to antagonize the Rebbe and his court. Menachem. I'm sure you know what is going on in Berlin these days. The philosophers, the intellectuals, with obscene salons where everyday young Jews are meeting gentle bohemians and intermarrying. This is the tohola, the mixing and the confusion which is destroying the Jewish people. They call themselves maskilim, enlightened ones. But for them, enlightenment means throwing away the light of Torah altogether. Why in times like these there is even confusion about who is the true wise tzaddik. And who is the scholar demon twisting words of Torah to line his own pockets? Amid general uproar, insolent upstart, do you mean to suggest there is any question about who is our true Rebbe here in Schultzmina? Perhaps you mean to imply that the Rebbe is deluding our dear Reb Oyser for some dishonest purpose? Hey, Moshe, he thinks the Rebbe is just patiently waiting for you to die so he can hop on your guilt. We know all about you, Reb Menachem. Reb Yehuda has just returned from a business trip to Saslan. He told us they have had enough of you there already. That's why you showed up here. The rabbis there put you under the ban for heresy. You and your bunch of phony penitents welling in the forest all week long and living off the dole as parasite. I think he needs to learn a bit of Yiris Shemayim right now. How dare you question the honor of the Schultz Rina Rebbe, our master and teacher, the great, pious, true, and godly leader of all the Jews of our generation. 
known far and wide for his learning in the domain of reveal and secret torrents for his unshakable trust in God. Anyone who dares to defame our Rebbe must fall under the ban in this world and also in the next world. Of this there is no question. Let's get him! What is our temptation? Drubbing of Menachem begins. He receives a few blows. Then, like Popeye with a can of spinach, a sudden surge of superhuman strength possesses him. He breaks loose from the pile of bodies. He speaks while walking quickly, but with dignity, towards the ark where the Torah is kept. Upon arriving, he carefully removes the Torah. Oi, oi, God in Himmel, God in Himmel, reboy the Shalom. Shh. Listen. Do you hear it? The Rebbe says, What? Do I hear what? What are you talking about? Shh! Don't you hear? Doesn't anyone hear it? How is it possible not to hear sounds at a moment like this? Mashogana, Mashogana! He's crazy! I tell you, he's dangerous! It's Menachem. Quiet. Shh! Perhaps it is the sound of an orchestra I hear. Don't you hear it too? He begins dancing to the soft, slow, ethereal music only he and the audience hear. Rebbe, you'll excuse me, but I don't hear any orchestra or anything else. I don't hear anything unusual. Much consternation and whispering among the group as they watch Menachem dancing blissfully. Buzzer and slide, Shavuos, 1806. Reb Menachem receives the Torah. Menachem continues dancing, slowing down or pausing from time to time to say the following. Now at the moment of the giving of the Torah on our great festival of Shavuos, now I understand what we find in the Holy Zohar about how there is all and there is all. Now I know that there is yet another kind of awe even more elevated than the supernal awe mentioned there. For now I know about the awe of godliness. This awe and fear is exalted and powerful in the extreme.